Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a tier list of all the books I read last year in 2020 to give you an idea of what I would normally read in a typical year, but also to see if I've changed my mind on any of them. Okay, so I have five tiers. Relatively self-explanatory, but from the bottom, time I will not get back. That would be one or two stars. Meh. Not terrible books, but clearly not something that's left a long-lasting impression. Probably a three-star. Solid. Possibly four-star book. Not necessarily a favourite, but solid. Hell yeah, would be a really strong four-star or a five-star, but not necessarily a favourite. And the dog's bollocks, meaning one of my favourites. If you're American, dog's bollocks means really good. <laughs> Okay, so I will be following genre, so if you have a really short attention span, you can skip ahead and, you know, just watch the genre you care more about. So I've got 35 books, um, almost as many authors' names to butcher, so I hope you're all ready. Let's start. Um, we're starting from literary fiction, and the first one is Convenience Store Woman by Sakaya Murata. And this was me, for me, was a solid four stars. I think that's how I rated it, and uh, I stand by that rating. It's the story of this woman who works in a convenience store in Japan that has no ambition to progress, get married, and have you know the usual uh, life path that is. The society expects of us and it's a really interesting perspective on you know being different um, again as you can imagine this is translated from the Japanese second book such a fun age by um, Riley Reed Wiley Reed right Riley Reed uh, okay this was really really interesting and really really good so it's going str straight to hell yeah the basic premise is that we start with this black nanny looking after a white kid and they go into a um, convenience store and, uh, and she's accused of having kidnapped um, the, the, ch the child. So it's, it's really funny but really interesting, really deep as well, a lot of really um, meaningful themes, race obviously being the main one, but also very interesting the way she talks about white people. And, you know, wanting to support minorities and uh, contradictions about that. One of my favorite ones, it would have been a five stars if it wasn't for the ending, which I I wasn't entirely happy with. But with that exception, it was absolutely possibly one of my favorite from, from last year. Moving on, Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I think I talked about this in my unpopular opinion tag. This is Time I Will Not Get Back. This, this was a 600 page book. For something that could have easily been half that, 300 page max. Instead of telling a story and weaving the themes in the story, we just have these characters who become mouthpieces for her observations and she's just, she just wants to show off how clever she is and all her opinions and I just, it just didn't, I couldn't connect with it. I just really actively disliked it. So that's a no from me. The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Satterfield, um, probably one that a lot of people would not have heard of, but this goes straight up to hell, yeah. I think I rated this four stars last year, and if anything has gone up even further in my estimation in hindsight. Um, this, is, this is being called uh, a love letter to storytelling, and I completely agree. There's a mysterious writer as one of the characters, an unpublished tale, it's all very subtle, but also very beautiful. I would really recommend it if that's the type of book that you enjoy, the quiet, somber atmosphere, but um, with beautiful prose and a subtle story. This was really beautiful and it's one that has stuck with me more than a lot of these other ones. Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. This goes up to solid. I think I rated this a four stars last year and I'm still of the same opinion. Uh, I was slightly skeptical, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not, but I actually did. It's a Frankenstein retelling, as it's not difficult to guess, um, but in a really modern um, style with transgender representation. It's um, a really funny book as well, which I wasn't really expecting. Um, really easy to get through, 
really enjoyable and a really solid read. Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Despite what Murphy says, um, she's included this as one of the underrated books. This was bloody everywhere last year. Like, I couldn't watch any videos where this wasn't being mentioned. And obviously was shortlisted for several prizes, which is just bloody everywhere. And for me, I'm sorry, this is just meh. The premise is absolutely fascinating. These two sisters, um, I can't remember if they're mixed race or they're just a, of a very uh, light um, skin color for, for uh, people of, of color. Um, and the and one passes for white and the other one pretty much embraces her blackness, even like uh, pushing herself in the other direction and how the story evolves. And, and that was actually quite interesting in, in itself. However, there's so many plot conveniences, things that I think are just lazy writing, in my opinion, for something that is supposed to be, you know, sophisticated literary fiction. This is not... Uh, this is not like romance or something where, you know, you can just overlook certain things. That kind of uh, plot convenience has really put me off. Um, and um, there was just something missing. Uh, a lot of jumping around uh, with the timeline, which is not necessarily bad, but I think a lot of little things that just left me a bit disappointed. So it's just a math for me. It was a three stars. And I still feel, um, still feel the same way. Okay, and finally, Andrea Simon. Ah, oh, God, give me the strength. So this is the sequel to Call Me By Your Name. And Call Me By Your Name is one of my favorite books. I was so looking forward to this. And it was just terrible. Oh. So we spent half the book, I think, um, following some characters no one cares about that were not even mentioned in the previous book. And, and the rest of the book is just Similar to Americana, it's not, there's no story, there's just characters lecturing us um, using Asimov's observations on love and relationship and society, just a fucking pain in the arse. Oh well. But luckily we're moving on to the Glass Hotel. Emily St. John Mandel. She wrote Station Eleven, which is an absolutely brilliant, 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 brilliant book. And this is very different. This is not a post-apocalypse or dystopian or anything like that. This is just um, straight um, contemporary. There's a significant element of the plot that goes back to the financial crisis. So I think you'll enjoy this book a lot more if you have some sort of interest in economics or uh, something like that. Um, you don't have to have it, but I think if you do, it becomes more enjoyable. And her writing is just beautiful. And I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I rated it four stars, and it's still a solid read for me. Probably the only YA I read last year. I heard so many things, so many good things about this one. Aristotle and Dante discover something by something, something Spanish name. Um, that's just several hours of my life that I will never get back. I don't know what people find in this. So to me, it was... And I don't know if that's why I don't normally read YA, but I, I was in the mood for something lighter and sweet, and but was, this was just... Oh, terrible. It was just full of cliché, and just one of the characters keep calling the other by first and last name all the time. It was just straight annoying. Um, I don't know why people like this. It's, it was just... Bleh. Maybe I'm just too old and cynical to appreciate that sort of thing, but I think it was just a bad book. Anyway, moving on to historical fiction. Ken Follett, one of my favorite authors. Edge of Eternity. Hell yeah. This is the last one in the Century Trilogy. You would have to have read the previous two books to pick this one up. But the trilogy is pretty epic in scope. It's also in the 20th century and we follow all the main events, um, at least in the Western world, for that century. And, and Fole is just a master of his craft. It's an excellent book, an excellent conclusion to the trilogy. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I would highly recommend the whole trilogy for anyone who likes historical fiction. Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. This, I rated four stars, and it's gone up even further in my estimations, and it's definitely a hell yeah tier. It's all set in the 20th 
century. But it also has an element of uh, fantasy because this is um, your typical Groundhog Day trope with the main character who can't really die and will born again every time. But uh, Atkinson's writing is really engaging, really nice. I would strongly recommend this. Again, if you like historical fiction, it touches on a lot of the, of the main historical events uh, set in England. Um, but it was really uh, enjoyable, and I definitely want to pick up the, the sequel to this as well, possibly this year or next year. On Chesil Beach by Ian McEwan was a solid read for me. Um, McEwan has these uh, small stories that he explores, uh, limited in scope, but he does it in a really nice way. This is the story of um, a newlywed couple, a really subtle, really emotional story. I would recommend it if you like uh, that sort of narrative. You might find it a bit boring if you like something with a bit thicker plot or a bit more action, but if you don't mind that sort of more gentler uh, sort of literature, this is quite nice and a really solid read. Can follow it again, The Evening and the Morning. This is a prequel to The Pillars of the Earth, which is one of my favorite books ever. Um, unfortunately, it goes only to solid. Which is not to say it's a bad book, because Solid is pretty good. It's uh, four stars. I think it was a four stars for me. However, I can't put it any higher because it starts to feel a bit formulaic for me. Um, the whole Kingsbridge, I guess it's a quartet, no longer a trilogy now. It tends to be a bit repetitive to some extent, and this was the fourth one I've read. And it wasn't original enough for me to push it any higher than this. Still enjoyable. It's all set in Viking times. Really interesting, really well executed. Solid recommendation. Mystery Thrillers. First one, Silent Patient by Alex McAdellis something. Solid recommendation. I have to say that in general, mystery thrillers for me tend to be four stars tops. Uh, it's very unusual for me to rate a mystery thriller five stars. I don't know why, don't ask me why, but that's the way I am. Um, Again, we follow the story of this patient who um, won't speak to anyone. There's a murder involved, um, trying to figure out what happened. Pretty engaging, pretty entertaining, solid recommendation if you like the genre. Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. Same, solid, four stars, still feel the same way. Um, this is a pretty unusual setting. It's, uh, it's about a hyperbaric chamber exploding and the whole family drama of a Korean family that ensues. Really entertaining um, and really enjoyable. So solid, another solid recommendation for the genre. Agatha Christie, and then there were none. Another solid recommendation for mystery thrillers. Um, this is all set in an island. It's pretty claustrophobic. We're with these uh, 10, if I'm not mistaken, characters. Things happen, shit happens. <laughs> and need to figure out who's done it. Christie is Christie. If you like that genre, this is another must read. And lastly, The Seven Deaths of Ele Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Tartan. This is a mystery, but with a paranormal element where we follow different characters every day. It's really clever, really original, really entertaining, really recommended. Dystopians. Little Eyes by Samantha Sh for Schwabling. Relatively little known, I think. It was long listed, if I'm not mistaken, for the International Booker Prize. So it's a, you know, crosses over with literary fiction, I would say. Um, and it's about this uh, toy that has been introduced uh, called Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken. Although, since she's Spanish or Spanish speaking, I guess it, it's meant to be Kentucky, something like that. Oh, I don't know. Uh, which is a version of Big Brother, and it gets paired up to uh, another toy sold somewhere else in the world, and the owner of one of the two toys can spy on the other all the time. So it plays on this theme of one hand the desire of being seen and being watched on social media on one hand, and on the other side on this desire to watch other people in their daily lives think of Big Brother and every reality show. Uh, so it's a really interesting premise. Um, 
execution was good, not the best, but still very entertaining book and a solid recommendation for me. Another Japanese uh, book translated very recently, even though I think this is a 25 year old book, The Memory Police by uh, Yoko Ogawa. Goes to hell, yeah. This is one where I've changed my mind. I rated this three stars, if I'm not mistaken, last year. But this is one of those that kind of stays with you and you keep thinking about and it's really subtle but really really interesting and really magical in a way. It's about this place, undefined location where things are being made to disappear and people actually forget about whatever disappears but the few people who do not forget are chased by the memory police. It's a really weird book, really subtle. This is not a fast-paced dystopian. It's more of a reflective kind of book. But if you like that genre, it's a really good one. Again, very important to have your expectations right. I think it was, this was mismarketed in some respects. Some people were expecting something a bit faster paced, which this is not. But very interesting nevertheless. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. This is the dog's bollocks, and this is one where I've changed my mind. I even contemplated DNF in this while I was reading it. Eventually I settled for four, for four stars. And then every week that's gone past, I just keep thinking about it, and it's just a masterpiece. The scope of the book is just incredible. It's, it's genre-defined. It's historical fiction, it's literary fiction, it's dystopian, it's sci-fi, it's, it's bloody everything in one book. And it's not easy to get through, it's not necessarily enjoyable because the prose changes with the timeline. I, I don't want to say too much, but it, it can, some sections of the book are really, really tough to get through. But if you do, I find it incredibly rewarding and it's become probably one of my favourite from last year's reads. And I would really, really recommend if you like weird and ambitious books. More Dystopia, Handmaid's Tale, Margaret Atwood. Solid recommendation. I talked about this during my dystopian video. A must read for the genre. Not necessarily the most enjoyable, not necessarily the easiest read. A bit dry might be difficult to connect with, but a classic nevertheless, and so original, so current, and so unique that it has to be read. So it's a solid recommendation for me. And the sequel, The Testaments, goes into the same bucket, but for very different reasons. This is more similar to one of these mystery thriller ones, as in, it's more entertaining, it's engaging, it's enjoyable, there's a plot, plot moves, but I'm going to forget it, about it pretty quickly. Which is the opposite to The Handmaid's Tale, which is not necessarily enjoyable, but something that will probably stick with you for a while. The Testament is a bit forgettable, but entertaining and not a bad book by any means. Time for science fiction. First one, absolute classic. Rendezvous with Rama, Artisy Clark. Dry in that way that classical science fiction can be but a must read for the lovers of classic science, fi science fiction nevertheless. Uh, this unidentified object that is clearly artificial enters the solar system and human beings are curious and want to find out what it is. That's pretty much it. If you enjoy the genre, another must read. If you do not enjoy classic sci science fiction, probably not for you. Recursion by Blake Crouch. Classic Blake Crouch, fast paced, reads like a thriller, but it's got some really meaningful scientific concepts. But at the same time, they're presented in a very friendly manner that anyone can pick up and follow along. It's not necessarily something really cryptic. Um, absolutely entertaining. Another solid recommendation. Another absolute classic, June, Frank Herbert. It was a four star when I read it last year. For the second time, it remains a solid recommendation. It's not higher because even though the world building is incredible and the story is so original, political intrigue is very interesting. I can't quite fully connect with Herbert's writing style and I still have the memories of the rest of the, of the series, which I think goes down, gradually downhill in my opinion. But especially the first entry of, of the series is a must read for all science fiction lovers 
um, definitely another solid recommendation. The Humans by Matt Haig. This is one where I've changed my mind, because I think it initially I rated four stars, and it's just meh. Uh, I actually think it's pretty forgettable. Um, pretty soon after I finished it, I think I really rated it to, down to three stars. Um, I know a lot of people love it, I just thought it was just very middle of the road and very forgettable, really. So, there you go. Fantasy. Um, this actually wasn't a very typical year because uh, I read very little fantasy last year. I've already read more fantasy this year, like the four months up until now, than the whole of last year. The Little Prince, one of the classics of French literature, and this is another solid tier for me. Not necessarily one of my favorite books ever, but definitely something that needs to be read. It's not a children's book, despite the appearance. It's a lot of the themes are quite adult in nature as well, I think, that a, a child wouldn't necessarily appreciate. Um, so, definitely uh, recommend it as well. Lord of the Rings. Now, I'm sure I get at least 20 people unsubscribing from this, but to me it goes into solid and not higher, I'm afraid. It's, again, it's not one of my favourite, despite the importance of, of the book in the genre, um, but similarly to Handmaid's Tale or something like that. Um, it's an absolute staple, a must read, but not necessarily one of my favourites. And lastly, to finish off, we've got non-fiction. First one, The Girl With Seven Names. I'm not even going to try pronouncing her name. Um, but she's a North Korean refugee, and the book talks about her life and how she manages, how she grew up in North Korea and managed to escape and her adventures in China and Korea. Absolutely fascinating read and very, very interesting. For me, it goes into solid as well. Um, and if you like that sort of memoirs, absolutely highly recommend. Educated by Tara Westover. And this is my second dog's bollocks. <laughs> this was absolutely brilliant. Uh, I really, 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 really liked it. Uh, this is a story of this um, girl um, who grows up in this family of nutcases who think the world is about to end and they prepare for the, for the Armageddon and they ref refuse um, conventional medicine and they've got all these, they live in this parallel universe and this is her story and how she managed to grow up in that environment and um, get educated, which is the title of the book. An absolutely fascinating book and I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. God is Not Great by Christopher Hitchens. This was another few hours of my life that I feel I absolutely wasted. Hitchin is really famous, um, and I was expecting something really insightful, really interesting to, to read in terms of um, the role of religion and the harm that religion um, can represent. However, to me, this read like the rant of one of those old men who go and watch the roadworks down the road and there was just very little insight and just attributing to religion everything that is wrong in the world in a very lazy manner I did not enjoy it at all and I'm agnostic myself so I was supposed to agree <laughs> in theory but this this is just one of those books that I think people only enjoy because they want to hear what they want to hear and this is telling them what they want to hear but there was not as much substance as I was hoping so Another Ken Follett, but this is just a short story that he wrote to support the renovation of Notre Dame following the fires, the, the fire a few, few years ago. I think I initially rated this four stars, but in hindsight, this was actually pretty meh. Uh, this was talking about some of the history of some of the cathedrals in Europe, but yeah, it wasn't great. Let's put it that way. And last, but definitely not least, Extreme Economies by uh, Richard, Richard Davis. I think the subtitle is Survival, Failure, Future, something like that. It's really, really interesting. So it goes straight, to, straight up to hell yeah. This was a four stars for me and it still is a very, very strong four stars. If you're interested in economics, this is a really interesting read. He takes nine different scenarios and explores how economies developed within those realities. So to give you an example, uh, he looked at uh, what happened in a small town in Malaysia after the tsunami? What, what happened to the, econo the economic system within that town? Or how is the aging demographics impacting a small town in Japan? 
or again the Darien Gap, which is that small piece of land between North America and South America where there is not even a road to drive through. You might not know this, but you, you could theoretically drive from, say, Alaska to southern Argentina if it wasn't for the Darien Gap, where it's just completely impassable and it's in the, in the hands of um, drug lords and uh, a, lot, <laughs> a lot of other dangerous situations. And this looks at the economics of that uh, specific environment. This is a really good book, and it's not ideological, which I really, really like. It's a very uh, open-minded look at you know, pros and cons of different um, market ideologies, not in themselves, but as they would impact a specific reality in a certain place at a certain time. So one of my favorite as well for the year. Anyway, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe if you like this video, join our Discord, and I'll see you the next time.